So I put on my Christmas shirt because I thought it would be fitting to the video. But when I sit like this, it just looks like a black shirt. Ugh. Hey guys, it's your Bow, Bo the Doggo, and welcome back to I Promise! <laughs> also, a little thank you to Vitsu the Fox, who just joined the gold tier at my Patreon. If you're interested in an icon like this, check out the Patreon up in the corner. Anyways, we are about two days away from Christmas and Scott was sent... Scott went to a school trip with his friends and all the dateable boys are here. Chris, Vincent and Kevin. And I guess in this playthrough we will go for Vincent to get the, the Christmas kisses. Also, there is a boy, a little boy lurking around on the in the hotel or whatever it is who i think is a ghost yeah and it seems like you think so as well in the comments so yeah let's find out more about that let's uh, go i wake up to bright sun rays falling down on me through the window i feel surprisingly vigorous but it's no wonder when so much fun awaits you vincent is still fast asleep with his face turned to the wall I can hear people talking outside the room. Looks like my classmates have already gotten up and are probably going to the diner. Mmm, breaky time. It's breakfast soon. I should wake Vince up. Wasn't Vince the one who always got up early? Oh, I just noticed. I also put up some lights here. I thought it would look pretty, but then when I turn on all the other lights I have here, it, it, <laughs> it looks kind of cheap. But yeah. Anyway, but there's a big problem. He's too cute when he sleeps. So there is something going on here after all. You have some sort of feelings. I can't ruin this moment, though I have to. Vincent? Vincent, wake up. It's morning already. We need to get ready. I come closer and put my hand on his shoulder. He frowns. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Y your voice. Mm -hmm. Come on, wake up! I back off to give Vincent space. Were you just talking to me? <laughs> yeah, for the last few minutes. I couldn't recognize it from my dream. I was in your dream? Aww. <laughs> sort of. Oh, I almost forgot. Good morning. He gives me a bright smile and grabs his phone. Oops, forgot to set alarm. <laughs> ah. Thanks for waking me up. I thought he, he, like in Great Troubles, he would always wake before uh, Scott. On the other hand, Scott was awake half of the night, patting Vincent's head. <laughs> First thing we decided to do was go skiing. By we, I mean half of the resource population. The cable car entrance quickly became crowded. The waiting line isn't the longest I've seen in my life, but the cableway car can only take six people, and it takes five minutes to go one way. And it's almost our turn. Oh! I forgot my gloves in the room! Oh no! I'm not sure if I can rent them with other equipment. Uh, no, stay in the queue. And hopefully you can rent new ones. Well, I guess it's something serious. Finally our turn comes. It's funny how nobody joins our group. Might have something to do with Chris's frightening aura. So, have you ever been on a gondola before? Yep, when I was about six. I remember I was really scared. But it was so impressive that my fears disappeared after a while. What about you, Chris? <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. So, cold. Is in a bad mood? What about skiing? Do you like it? It's fine, but I'd rather shoot snowboarding. Wow, cool. I'm not very good at it. I always sway to one side. If we were dating Chris in this uh, this playthrough, I would <laughs> I would have chosen to do the snowboarding. But I guess we do what uh, Vincent does. I can teach you. Oh, I can snowboard at all. Do you like skiing, Scott? I do, but I would like to learn snowboarding too. Oh, I, it sounds like this is one of those choices. Like, who are you going to go with? <laughs> Anytime. So, you've been in such place before? Yeah, with my mom when I was a kid. We spent great weekends at ski resorts. She looks so awesome on skis. Like a true professional. Hmm. So, it's your first time going on a vacation by yourself? Do you also have a skating rink? Should we go see it too? 
They ask questions simultaneously. It's hard to decide who to ask first. Yeah, but it's fine. I have a really good time with you guys. And of course we should go to the skating rink. We have to visit everything. I think so too. We shouldn't miss the chance. Miss the chance? We have a full day tomorrow. To do it again? Why not? I'm not interested in skating. Well, Scott is. Oh, someone's vacation is all about Scott, huh? Oh no. What, what are you talking about? I didn't mean anything like that. Oh, really? Chris, you're just jealous. What's your problem, Christopher? No, what is your problem? It's getting a bit stuffy in here. Why can't I just relax and have fun? Chris, stop it. Stop picking on Vincent. Oh, you always want to make everyone get along around you. Cute Scott is cute. Don't call me cute. Are you embarrassed? So cute. Enough, Chris. He doesn't like it, don't you see? Do you really think so? No, I don't like it. Don't you have anything better to talk about? Have you forgotten your gloves? Yes. <laughs> what? How did you know? Probably noticed that I put my hands in my pockets to warm them. But they don't wear gloves. <laughs> yeah, I hope I can rent them. Here. Does he want to give me his pair? But your hands will get cold. It's my fault. I can return and fetch mine if needed. It's not a long way back. Well, last year they had the gloves available for rent. I'm sure they have it this time too. Scott's right. Take them. Chris put his gloves on my knees. I am touched by his care. But Vincent said I can rent gloves. I should give them back. Thanks, but I'm fine, really. I'm not cold and we were almost at the place. You can take mine if you want. Should I have all the gloves now? <laughs> and now I'm a happy owner of two absolutely unnecessary pairs of gloves. Uh, <laughs> what do I do with them? You could give them to charity. <laughs> How did it even turn like this? You think mine aren't good enough? Oh, you shouldn't bother. Bother? You think I'm bothered? Oh, come on, they started fighting over the smallest of things. Everything was fine at the school. We even had lunch together. But recently these two have had some tension between them. I tried to ask both of them but got no answer. And they pretend like nothing is going on. I wonder, is there some kind of rivalry between them? Like they both know that they're, the other one is interested in Scott? And that's why? Hmm. But I'm not just imagining things. Coward. Stop arguing! It ruins the mood! We're here on vacation, aren't we? Scott's right. This conversation is over. It's strange that even usually gentle Vince is so aggressive. What happened between them? Oh, the music caught me by surprise. <laughs> the vista on the peak is unlike anything I've ever seen. It's like I'm looking down the whole world below. The crisp cold air burns my lungs. Renting the gloves was pretty easy. Vincent and Kevin took skis, but Chris chose snowboard. I can only use skis, but I really would like to learn snowboarding too. I need to decide. <sighs> okay, this time we're not going for Chris. No, -uh. we're going for Vincent, and Vincent took the, the skis. So we are taking the skis. I feel confident with skis. I guess it's the best choice. <laughs> Looks like I'm the only one to ride snowboard. How about a little competition? I can give you a head start. Head start? We'll outride you in a jiffy. Chris grins in a good way. He's a true sportsman and his eyes shine in anticipation. If you really want to compete, it's better than one on one. So who's gonna challenge me? Uh, should we maybe wait for Vince to decide? I guess if if it asks, if we let, if any of the answers is about Vincent, I think we should take that one. I really want to, but I wonder what Vince would say. I challenge you. Oh, the rivals. <laughs> he did it. Seriously? I hope you're good. Good luck, Vince. Show him what you got. Chris gives me a pointed glare. Did he want me to cheer for him too? Sorry, Christophers. Not this time. Now we're rivals. The guys got ready at the starting line. Three, two, one. Go, go, go! May the fastest win! Uh, hey, Chris? 
Go! Head start, Scott. Head start. Oh, he's so... <laughs> he's so cocky, this one. Enough! Just go already! Or our victory won't be fair! Who <laughs> said you're going to win? Christopher smirks at me and begins his descent. Jackass! They both gain speed surprisingly fast. The descent is very long, so it's not to our advantage. I believe it's less tiresome on a snowboard, but that might be my imagination. Only when they almost disappear, I realize that I've forgotten something important. Kevin? <laughs> I'm left all alone now. I chose the easiest track to make it in about the same time as the guys. And I found them at the end of the descent. They notice my approach and they look very irritated. Cheers to the winner! Did you win? No, Vincent did. Hooray! Yay, Vinci boy! It's the winner boy! Vincent is a gamer boy! He's the one who win! <laughs> Hooray! Next time you know better than to not give us a head start! Congratulations, Vince! He becomes a embarrassed and scratches his head. Well, it wasn't easy. But you made it! Don't relax just yet. I was right behind you. Sounds like a poor threat. Does someone want to try himself? Do you want to lose again? <laughs> I like your attitude. Remember my face, because soon you will only be able to see my back. <laughs> we'll see about that. After skiing, we went to the cafe. We were drinking hot chocolate and, for the first time, I thought about how sad it is to live in the dorm. Of course we have a cafeteria too, but the quality of the food is nothing like this beautiful face. Beautiful face. <laughs> this beautiful place. I'm ready to settle down here, right among the chairs and tables. We decided to go skating. Kevin apologizes and went to rest. Kevin was there all the time? <laughs> so it's just the three of us. Vincent and Christopher are still giving each other a dirty looks. The skating rink is a small round area of ice covered ground. In the middle of it is a large decorated Christmas tree. It must look amazing at night. I should ask when exactly the area closes. As soon as Chris steps on the ice, I make an interesting discovery. He can skate. At all. Oh, it's kinda cute, I think. Okay, now you both will be calling each other cute. <laughs> it doesn't match his image of a great sportsman. I couldn't help but laugh. Yeah, laugh. I deserve it. Well, I thought you were perfect, but I was wrong. <laughs> Say that again. Just omit the last part. He takes a few steps forward. Why are you walking? You gotta skate! Meanwhile, Vin steps on the ice and shows us how to do it. He's very good! Oh, this is not good for uh, Chris's confidence. He makes a circus and comes back to us. Wow, Vincent, you're doing great! Vincent blushes. Are they both trying to show off the cute side? It's dangerous for my heart! Ah! Oh. <laughs> Those lovely boys! Christopher stops walking on the ice and tries to skate, but he uses too much force. He loses control and falls down. The sound is so loud, I almost jump. Is he alright? Doesn't look like he hit his head. Uh, are you okay? He gives his hand. You're such a gentleman. Chris takes the hand and tries to get up. Oh, he did take the hand after all. I thought he was gonna like... <laughs> Surely didn't expect you to help. Maybe you're... Ah! Chris loses the balance and tries to get up and grabs Vincent's jacket. That forces both of them to the ground. Oh, <laughs> Looks like they're going to fall down a lot. I come close to help them, but laugh instead. It sounds almost like Chris and, uh, and Vincent could be their own little love story. They started with rivaling, but realized that what they wanted was already there. Be between them both. Oh. That wasn't intentional, honestly. You little bastard! Wanna join us? He reaches out to me, but I avoid his reach. Vincent seems to be even more embarrassed. I can't stop laughing. They finally get up and I'm really happy. My stomach started to hurt from all that laughter at the futile attempts. <laughs> Jesus got you. <laughs> what a friend you are. Offer some help, Chris. Leave him be. I want to help him, but I don't think that's the right thing to do um, since we're going for Vincent. It's too fun to watch them. I shouldn't interfere. Maybe they'll become friends. I quickly understand that I can't just stay and watch from the side, so I joined their game. 
Chris drops me and Vincent in turns. He's eager to skate fast and show off instead of starting slow. <laughs> Maybe he's hopeless. Wow. <laughs> Soon more classmates who unluckily came to skate joins our Fall with Chris game. <laughs> Eventually we return to the hall, cold but happy. Later in the evening we are all invited to the campfire. Marshmallows and scary stories. What could be better? I think it'd be too long in my room and I had to go to the campfire alone. The hall seems empty. Or so I thought. When I'm about to round the corner, I hear our teacher's voice. He stands in front of the exit, blocking my way. Oh, he's talking to uh, to the, um, the 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 infirmary person. What I learned that I never showed in the video. Let's see, how was it? Mr. Bennett gave Scott some papers or books or something to go to the infirmary with and then Scott crashed into big cities and dropped everything and found this note in the papers and thought about maybe it was big cities note um, and decided not to read it. So, but if we would have read it, we would have seen that it was something like meet me in the infirmary at this time, boom, boom, boom. And Scott would be like, oh, is it, is it big cities who want to meet me? Oh, ho, ho, ho. So later when he get there and peeks into the room, there's actually these two having a jolly time, so to speak. So there is a little romance going on between these two. <laughs> yes, I'm listening. Will? Not that again. I eavesdrop on something I shouldn't. I guess that is what he's referring to here. It's bad to interrupt, but eavesdropping is even worse. Last time was definitely unnecessary. I didn't expect your call. How's it going in Finland? Oh, is it Finnish? Oh, maybe we can give him a Finnish accent then. No, I, I can't. <laughs> I was a Finnish accent. Noises. Cold. Decorated the tree with brothers. Is that a Finnish accent? Something like that. I'm sorry, all Finnish people watching me. Eh, uh, Burke. <laughs> Finland? Wow, our doctor is from far away. Celebration is going full steam. The kids are prepared campfire, so they're going to tell stories and scare each other. Like always. Like you've never been on a school trip. You haven't? Oh, you miss so much in life. Bennett's laugh little. When you get back, I can take you and my son here. Those scary stories are perfect for your braveness. I bet you both will tremble like leaves. On the other side, I could hear resented mumbling and grumbling. Looks like the doctor does not agree with such insult on his bravery. Bennett continues to tease Norbert, and they eventually take it outside. This is my chance to leave unseen. I hope eavesdropping won't become a habit of mine. Everyone gathered in evening air. Kids clustered around the campfire, and someone started to draw some marshmallows. This was weird pick of music. What feeling do you want to, to, me to have out of this? <laughs> I make myself comfortable and prepare to listen. Oh, Kusi! Let me begin. I used to live nearby and heard a story about some family. It's not easy to make a living in a resort area, but they managed. Even though their parents spent most of the time doing night shift work, they had three kids. The eldest boy was about 15, and the younger two sisters were about six. One night, the parents were once again working another overtime night shift. The eldest brother put the twins to bed and sat down near the fireplace to do his homework. Suddenly, their dog outside started to bark. He was barking like crazy. The son became worried, but kept doing his homework anyways. Then the dog stopped barking, and someone knocked on the door. At first it was quiet, but then the knocking became louder and louder. The eldest son was scared, but still came to the door and asked, Who's there? A woman's old, nasty and hoarse voice answered him. Thomas, my boy, open the door! He shivered. It wasn't his mom, for sure. He felt that he must not open the door. His sisters woke up and came downstairs while the knocking continued. At first, the girls thought that it was the parents. Then, someone behind the door shouted, Tom, open the door! I'm hungry! I'm so hungry! The voice changed and turned into a man's voice. Curse you! I'm hungry! Give me one of your sisters! Thomas was terrified. Something outside longed for the flesh. One of the girls quietly went to the back door, and Thomas only noticed when the back door slammed shut. He 
He was dialing the police when the voice outside calmed down. The kid wanted to go to look for his sister, but the policeman on the phone forbid him from leaving his other sister alone. When the police came, he gathered enough courage to get us out. Their beloved dog was laying down in the snow, and blood was everywhere. The police said that it was some kind of wild animal. Wolf, or perhaps a cougar. But animals can talk. That, Thomas knew for sure. A week later, they found his sister's body. It was torn apart. Nobody knew what attacked her. I feel uncomfortable. I should probably go back to my room. <laughs> Scared, huh? Of course! I wanted cute stories. <laughs> you have no idea, chicken. You know, it's not my first time here. I heard a story. Many years ago, there was a winter that was particularly cold. Much colder than this year. The wind cut to your bones, your eyelashes stuck together, and fingers turned into icicles if you forgot to wear gloves. One of those cold days, nine kids played hide and seek. When it was time to go home, they found out that one kid was missing. It was an accident. The other kids avoided him and never wanted to play with him. But his mother, who worked here, forced them to take him in, so they had no choice. The other kids were happy together, and every time they got carried away with playing hide and seek, they conveniently forgot to find him. Sooner or later, he always came home, but that last time, he didn't. Everyone went looking for him for several days. They searched the surrounding woods thoroughly many times. They found him on the fourth day. Guess where? In the pond? Under the snow? There was an avalanche? Yeah, probably nobody noticed it. Maybe in the forest? There's no other place to get lost there. Yeah, in the forest. His frozen, stiff body was blue and decapitated. They never found his head. Ugh! Ugh, it gives me the shivers. <laughs> Since then, his troubled spirit wanders around the forest, stalking lone travelers and decapitating them if they're in the forest after midnight. Oh, that's scary. I was going to suggest that maybe that's the, the, the kid we found. Well, we haven't been out in the forest yet, so that's why he haven't decapitated us. <laughs> they tried many times to build a fence around the forest, but in the next morning, they found out that somebody or something had cut a hole in it. Ew, disgusting! Why would he decapitate other people? He takes his revenge on all the kids because nobody helped him. Let's go to the forest and check it out! That's it, if you're not scared! Like, we have nothing better to do than freezing our asses off just because you want it. No way! And your story is too unrealistic! I have a better one! Even another story? Oh, once a group of friends, I think they were students from a university, decided to ski down the highest mountain. The group of friends were fairly large, so they divided in two groups to use the cable car. The first group reached the top and waited for the friends on the next lift behind them. But when the cable car reached them, it was empty. They kept on waiting and waiting. The next group came, but they weren't their friends. Skiing down was not very fun since they couldn't stop thinking about their friends who they thought decided to play a bad joke on them. In the evening, they looked around the whole resort, but still couldn't find them. Police investigations were long and thorough, but didn't find any traces. It was concluded that they just left the boring resort unceremoniously. But a year later, at the very same day, resort workers found six dead bodies in one of the cable cars. Were they teleported in time? They were almost completely decayed, naked skeleton with rare patches of rotting skin. Ugh. Their clothes were faded in a very poor state, like if it was used for decades. A DNA test showed that it was indeed the missing students' bodies, but the bones were much older than they should have been. So the lift got trapped in some time loop? Exactly. Since then, other people disappeared occasionally, but no skeletons were found anymore. I wonder where they got trapped. Why didn't they go out of the cable car? Maybe there was nothing to go out to. Like, no space. Yeah, and this is much more real than my story. You should read less comic books. Oh, come on. Don't ruin the mood. My turn now. Long time ago, when my mom was a kid, she was here on vacation with her parents. And a strange case happened. The local kids believe that if you make a snow rabbit and leave it for a night, white cute rabbits will appear at your doorstep at midnight. So for a whole day they made snow animals, hoping to see real ones at night. They used almost all their coals from fireplaces to make little eyes and noses. My grandpa and grandma forbade my mom to make snow figures with the other kids since she had soaked her boots the day before and they hadn't dried yet. 
So my mom stood looking jealously through the windows at how the other kids have fun. On the following morning, all the kids were gone. The only clue left were the tracks of some huge animal footprints in the snow. The worried parents mobilized and went out to follow the trail which led them into the forest. The trail was very long and they had been walking until dark. The woods became denser and the trees trunks thicker and they almost came to the center of the forest. Then right at midnight the parents came to a small opening where they found something really strange. The bodies? Hey don't interrupt me! They found snowmen, exactly matching the number of missing kids. An angry father thought that the kids were just messing with them, forcing them to wander into the cold forest just to get attention, so he smashed one of the snowmen, and he found his frozen to death son inside. Ah, uh -huh, that's creepy! How do I sleep after that? <laughs> what are you scared of? If that was true, his mom wouldn't have let him come here. Maybe she got tired and decided to get rid of him. <laughs> Rude. I better get rid of you. This would be a nice tale for the next visit. Oh, thank you. Oh, Damn, we're out of marshmallows. Scott, could you bring some more? Uh, yeah, wait a moment. There was a simple rule. Whoever sits on the edge runs errands. Compared to the campfire, it's really quiet inside the lodge. Oh, there was a campfire. I thought all the time that they were sitting in front of uh, the open fire inside. Right, I need to find the white package with the marshmallows. Nothing here. Or here either. A new character. Voice. Looking for this? Nice, got lucky. Yeah, thank you. I haven't seen him before. Looks like he's probably from the other class. Why is he sitting here all alone? Would you like to join us? We're sitting at the campfire telling ghost stories. He gives me an appraising glance, thinks for a moment and says, No. Okay then. I expected a different answer. Aren't you bored here all alone? By the way, I'm Scott. Gabriel Royals. Nice to meet you. So, still don't want to come? No. But thanks for the offer. Okay, see ya. I needed to hurry. They're waiting for the marshmallows. Oh, we went to bed 10 minutes ago. Lights are off and the darkness is pretty convenient for talks. Vincent couldn't have fallen asleep so fast. Maybe he'll agree to bear with me for a while. Vincent? Yeah? How are you? Am I being serious? I'm just surprised he answered immediately. I'm good. And you? Did he decide to play along or did he simply not notice the awkwardness in my question? Anyway, I don't really have any specific to talk about. Same. How did you like today? I mean, you were really good at everything. It's a shame you're not going to be a professional athlete. The word is missing out. Are you giving me praise? <laughs> Thanks. But you're exaggerating. No, not at all. Actually, my parents forced me to do certain winter sport club for a while. Hmm? Ice hockey, I guess? Yeah. I was interested, yes. But nothing serious. Not to the point of dedicating my life to it. And that's why he was so good at skiing. <laughs> I'm more interested in telling my thoughts and feelings to other people, rather than overcoming my physical limits and making rivals with other athletes. Vincent once said that he wanted to become a writer of sorts. I think he started something serious, but it hasn't allowed me to see his work yet. Maybe that will be his Christmas present. Speaking of rivalry though, that about sum up his relationship with Christopher. Are you interested in sports? I mean, you're in the baseball club. What? How does he know I am? How? How did you know this is a fresh game? Does that mean that the baseball club was the cannon? Huh. Well, it's harder than I thought. But it's fun. Still, it's just a way to kill time. I don't plan to continue after school. And I'm just a newbie too. Would you like to try something else, perhaps? Ah, do you not believe in me at all? I said that with obvious irony. But Vincent still started. But Vincent still starts to apologize. O of course I do. Sorry, I should have not said that. <laughs> Relax, I'm just kidding. It's only a club. R right. But you choose. I waited for a while, but he didn't finish. I should change the topic. What are they talking about? So tell me about ice hockey. Well, my dad forced me to go for a few months. 
You probably already know the rules and there's really nothing much else to tell. My heart hurts a little bit. I know that disgusting feeling. Envy. It's great to have a father. I wonder what my father was like. Mom never said anything about him. The only thing I have is a wrinkled photo of our happy family. But his face is smeared with a black sharpie on it. Aww. Are you asleep? What? You became quiet, so I thought you fell asleep. No, I'm, I'm still awake. I might make a mess for asking, but I want to know what it means to have a real full family. Oh, Scott, we already know that Vincent's family isn't the greatest. Sorry to change the topic, but could you tell me about your family? I could. Why? You said your dad brought you to the ice hockey club, and I'm curious what that is like. Vincent sighs heavily. Oh, it was great a long time ago. Exactly what you might probably imagine. Typical, normal American family. Now we know that they're Americans. <laughs> Mother, father, son. Actually, I'm not very... Uh, never mind. I'm not much of a son. Oh, uh, uh. <sighs> ah, never mind. Well, my father thought that my hobbies were not manly enough. So he brought me to play ice hockey instead. At first I was eager. I never skipped practice. But you can't run away from yourself. So I dropped out. They didn't like it. And well, there was something else I didn't like too. The truth is, I am... Um, he has a hard time saying something. It must be important. Oh, we know what he wants to say. I'm gay! Haha, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a coward. In the end, we had a little quarrel and I moved to the school dorms. Sorry, my story is boring and trivial, really. I made him sad. Why can't I keep my mouth shut? Ah, stupid, stupid Scott. <laughs> I should be the one to apologize. I thought you had a great family and just asked without thinking. I'm fine now. I mean, here, with you guys, I feel so much better. It's great, isn't it? It's not great at all. His parents destroyed their family because of stupid ice hockey? Yes, because of ice hockey. That's brutal. Or it's something else. I have a feeling he's still hiding something, but I have no right to torment him any further. Hey, come on. He's worrying about me. I'm such a tactless guy. <laughs> I wonder if his kindness has any limits. And I think this Christmas is going to be wonderful. You promised me, remember? Ah, uh, I promise. <laughs> his voice became warm and I came back to my senses. No time to be sad. It's Christmas tomorrow. Already? Oh, you'll see. It's going to be awesome. I like Inspire Scott better. <laughs> I mean, I like you in any form. But now you seem inspired and I sort of want you to always be happy. Oh, here I go again. Sorry, I said something stupid. Don't mind me. Don't mind that, please. You're not listening, are you? I couldn't stop laughing from his confused look. He's very funny when he's embarrassed. Oh, he's so cute. Vince is such a good guy. And now he's sulking at me because I can't stop giggling. Stop laughing, it's in the middle of the night. Oh! We gave each other sheepish looks and started to laugh loud. I'm calling the police, I swear. Vince, Scott, you're going to be arrested, you hear? <laughs> wow. It was hard, but we managed to calm down. After that, we whispered to each other for a while until we fell asleep. Oh, come on. I woke up in the middle of the night again. It's no good. No matter what I do, I can't get back to sleep. Oh, and I'm out here again. The thoughts I tried to avoid in the daytime now fills my head. And now I'm thinking about the guy I met yesterday. Did we just not understand each other? Or was he making fun of me? What are the chances of me meeting him today? Could it be that he's a poor sleeper too? After all those scary stories, I feel uncomfortable. Is it alright for me to wander in the darkness? What if some rabbit freezes me to death, or someone decapitates me? Oh. But nothing like that will happen while I'm inside. Probably. <laughs> Hopefully. <gasps> Seriously? Again? 
You fooled me. It was me who was fooled. You ran away yesterday. How could I help you if you didn't tell me what you want? I've been waiting for you. Ah, uh, what is up with this kid? He is so difficult to understand. Wait a moment. Where? Come. He definitely has a strange accent that I'm not even going to try to uh, make. <laughs> is he a foreigner? Maybe his vocabulary is limited, but I'm worried about his nightly walks. Wait, wh what did he say? He wants to show me the way? <laughs> Co what? He disappeared? Phew, calm down Scott. I want to shout out my frustrations, but I have a feeling that the people sleeping won't appreciate it. If I meet him again next night, I'll handcuff us together. But I have no handcuffs. <laughs> oh well, maybe Vincent has some. Maybe he is a secret bad boy. <laughs> At least the Christmas lights cause me down. It's so quiet. Just me, the fireplace and colorful lights. It smells of fresh pine and the fire crackles. I should have taken a book with me. I thought that this vacation would be short. And it is, though the nights are so long and restless. Sometime later, I go back to my room. Tomorrow will be an awesome day. Ah! Oh, stop! Thank you! Goodbye! Enough for today! Almost exactly one and a half hour recorded. Like the other episode. Oh, so I guess this episode will also be about 40 minutes and maybe... God, I'm so restless now myself. But anyway, now we're one step closer. I'm not sure about, uh, but I think there will be two more episodes um, to get Vince to bed, so to speak. <laughs> I don't think they have any scenes in this one, though. I think this is all clean, safe for work game. But yeah, I think it's two more episodes. And I'm actually considering doing Chris and Kevin as well. Because this game is so more fleshed out than <laughs> Great Troubles. And it has more focus on the character than the last one. So I'm, I'm really interested to getting to know Chris and Kevin better as well. So let me know in the comments if you think that's a good idea if you want to see the two other characters. But yeah, anyway, thank you so much for my patrons for supporting me. If you want to join the Patreon, uh, there's a link up in the corner over there and, and in the description. There's also a link to my Discord you can check out and talk to other furries. And the Patreon, I got a tip a few hours ago from Vitsi the Fox, who got the shout out in the beginning, suggested that maybe we could do uh, monthly streams on the on for my patrons. Maybe that's something that's already happened. We'll see. I like that idea. But yeah, I think that's all. I'm rambling again. You probably want to see another video now, so I'm just I'm gonna leave you. You you're gonna go get and watch Markiplier or whatever you're gonna watch now. <laughs> so yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and ringing the bell so you get notified when I upload a new video. Um, yeah, that's all. Links in the description if you want to download the game. <laughs> ah. Oh, I have such I have such a hard time rounding up everything and just ending the episode. Ah, so here we go. Take care, guys, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. I wonder if. I mean, the lights are so much more prettier now, but it's too dark. Ah!